Hi everyone, my name is Samir. I'm a gaming solution architect at Google Cloud. Today I will be introducing you OpenMatch, an open source matchmaking framework based on Kubernetes. Then Ishikawa-san from Gringe will share about the experience using OpenMatch in KickFlight, a new 4v4 mobile game that just released last month. So before diving into Grange experience of OpenMatch, let's first take a look at what exactly it is. But to explain you how it was founded, I first need to explain the challenges that many developers face with matchmaking services. Matchmaking is one of the hardest unsolved problems for online multiplayer games. At a fundamental level, matchmaking takes players connect to your games to match them up and connect them to game servers. Creating a good match is critical to your game's success, and what constitutes a good match changes from game to game. You have to consider attributes like skills, level, latency, wait time, and they are all critical to your game. In general, making a good matchmaking service for a game is hard, but it's core to your game design. Running this as a global scale for your player population presents a whole different set of challenges. Architecting a matchmaking service that can run at high scale reliably is very hard and may not be an interesting problem to solve for a game developer. This is exactly why OpenMatch was created. So OpenMatch is an open source matchmaking framework co-founded with Unity. It leverages Kubernetes to provide flexibility scalability, and extensibility. Just to give you an example of scale it can handle, maybe you remember the Halloween Doodle from 2018, that 4v4 multiplayer game you could play from the google.com website. Yeah, that one was using OpenMatch to match players, and it handled a concurrent peak of 500,000 players. Because with OpenMatch, you don't need to worry about the scalability and reliability of the underlying infrastructure. You can focus on building the core logic of your matchmaker. Because I think pictures worth a thousand words, let's take a look at the high-level ar architecture of how an online game was integrated with OpenMatch. On the left side, you have a game front-end with your core game logic that calls into the matchmaking framework. And at the same time, on the right side, you have a pool of servers that players can be placed on. That's simultaneously calling in the matchmaking logic. Open match sits in the middle, handling the players that are available, splitting them by skill level, latency, etc., and match them up with servers that are available. As a developer, you only care about developing the match function, which contains the core logic of your matchmaker. The left and right boxes are components from your game that you need to integrate with OpenMatch. Let's take a closer look at those components in the left and right boxes. The game frontend is the endpoint where your game clients will connect to. To avoid cheating, you don't want them to directly connect to the OpenMatch frontend because only your game frontend is capable of verifying the data provided by the game clients by accessing a database containing players' data. So basically, it's your game frontend that creates matchmaking requests, also called tickets, in OpenMatch. On the right side, you find the game backend, also called director, and the dedicated game servers. Your game backend is a key component in the matchmaker since it triggers the match function execution. Once OpenMatch finds matches, it will also handle the assignment of game servers to the match players. This architecture is something you can then reuse across your games as you build multiple games. To have a better idea of how is the flow of a match, let's take a look at the life of a match step by step. First step, a player wants to play against other players. The game client makes a request to your game frontend to find a match. It's the game frontend that actually makes the request to the open match frontend to find a match. Every request are stored in the state store running on Redis. As I mentioned in the previous slide, it's the game backend that triggers the match function 
using the open match backend. The game backend requests for a match. The open match backend triggers the matchmaking function that uses the query component to query Redis and find candidates for a match. Once a, a match is found, the open match backend will return it to the game backend that will then finalize the entire matchmaking process by assigning a dedicated game server to the match players. The last step of the life of a match is the assignment. It's the last step where we assign a game server to the match players. For this, the game backend, we allocate a dedicated game server by using solutions like Agones or any other custom server management system. Once it gets the allocated game server IP and port, it will reach out again to the open match backend to update the tickets stored in the state store with that information. Finally, once tickets have been updated, the game frontend will push that game server details to players who will then connect to the server and just start to play. And voila, that's how open match works in a nutshell. Hope this was clear enough. If you're building a small game, you might not be interested in a complex, highly scalable matchmaking framework, but you can still leverage OpenMatch to write a simple matchmaking function that will look like a single function in the language of your choice. Plug that into the framework and you have a fully functional matchmaking service without a lot of work. But where OpenMatch really shines is if you have a really large system with thousands or millions of players that are all coming at the same time. And the player population is segmented into different groups and matched up very quickly. So you might be running hundreds of concurrent matches on the player population looking for the best match to make your game work. So now that you know what open match is, let's listen to the experience of the Japanese game studio Grange using open match in their latest mobile game Kickflight. Hi, my name is Yasunori. I'm an engineering manager at Grange. It will talk about why and how we use OpenMatch in Kickflight. I will explain the game called Kickflight. Kickflight is free flying and mid-air battle action game for smartphones. Four versus four real-time multiplayer game. You control a character called a kicker. 12 characters with three game modes, available in more than 130 countries. Launched on February 13, 2020. Here, kick flights matchmaking requirements. The video on the right shows the matchmaking using open match. You select a kicker under game mode and by tapping the battle button, matchmaking is begin. Kick flight will match two teams of four with the following requirements. Match users with similar play skills. Matching users with the Far different play skills will result in a one side match. Minimize character overlaps in battles. Each of characters has a role. There are four types attack, support, tank, and speed. Matchmaking is done so that the same character or role does not su suffer as much as possible. You can cancel anytime before matchmaking is found. The progress is displayed in real time during matchmaking. There is four reasons why we decided to use open match. The first one is because we wanted to make a general purpose matchmaking framework. 
because building a matchmaker for each game is pricey. Building a general purpose matchmaking with the budget of a game is not possible. As a result, each game had a different matchmaking implementation, depending on the type of matchmaking. Making a matchmaker game with one game up can take anywhere, from six months to a year. Even in that case, there are many problems about scaling. In Kickflight, the development of matchmaking logic was about one or two months, and it took, it took about one month for version updates and load tests. Most importantly, this knowledge can be used to build faster using OpenMatch in the future. Secondly, because we wanted to focus on the matchmaking logic. In general, scalability is a major issue in matchmaking. This problem was minimized because OpenMatch is by design scalable. Third, because we could find working MMF samples. At that time, there wasn't much documentation, but there are some working examples. We read the source code and got the help of Google Ads. The last one is because OpenMatch was used successfully in the Halloween Doodle in 2018. This is Kickflight architecture. Except for real-time game server, everything is built on GCP. The central part is open match. Creation and deletion of tickets are performed from the API server through Cloud Load Balancer. Acquisition of assignment is requested to open match via ingress and endpoints. The default open match uses release pause on GKE. We have changed that to Cloud Memory Store. As a side note, we used Cloud Spanner as our main database. In Kickflight, there are three main components. The API changes the kicker and enhances the skill of a character called disk. It is implemented using PHP 7, and it uses Cloud Memory Store for Redis for session cache, and Cloud Spanner for player data. OpenMatch's version is version 0.7 with some customization added. It handles players matchmaking, and matchmaking function is also implemented in PHP 7. Dedicated game server handles the real-time aspect of battles. Let me show you what went well with OpenMatch. We are able to focus on the development of the matchmaking logic. OpenMatch does the communication part with the client and the scale. So we are able to concentrate on the matchmaking logic. Scaling the system based on the number of players. We can scale by increasing front end and matchmaking function. Also, easily modify the matchmaking criteria. Since front end and match function are separated, just modify the logic, then build and deploy the images. We can deploy without any downtime. The server management was simplified thanks to the managed services like GKE and Cloud Memory Store. We use cloud endpoints to secure the access to the OpenMatch front end. It was very easy to use with GKE because it was made for Kubernetes. By default, Redis in GKE is used, but management is easier using cloud memory store. This helped reduce operation cost. Assignment communication is done via cloud endpoints. Originally, it should be done via our game server front end. 
but handling streaming connection in PHP is complex. So we used ingress and cloud endpoints to handle this part. Finally, for monitoring, OpenMatch telemetry works seamlessly with stack driver. Here, few changes we faced with our game. We launched a game using OpenMatch for the first time in the world. We used very early versions from version 0.3 of OpenMatch. Back in version 0.3, there was not much documentation. So we raised source codes with help from Google Ads. Here are some tuning we have done on match, open match for our kick flight. Parallel processing by splitting profile. A match profile is open matches representation of a match specification. For example, processing is performed in parallel for each game mode. We adjusted the literary intervals. If the literary interval is too short, the load on the ready server will increase. Increasing this interval can reduce the load on the ready server. We also adjusted the ready TTLs. Long TTL will increase data volume. The shorter the TTL, the lower the load on the ready server. We use C2 instances. It is important to match in a short period of time, as it will not be able to judge if the matchmaking queue accumulates. For that purpose, very fast processing is realized using C2 instances. For example, the difference between 1.0 seconds and 0.8 seconds will make a big difference. We reduce the filter condition of profile. The load on increased according to the multiplication of the learning profile and filter. So we changed to minimum filter conditions. We backported from version 0.8 because execution from backend to function was not balanced. In addition, we performed load test of communication part using Locust. Finally, let's look back at the game launch. We are able to handle the load at the time of launch thoroughly. During our load test, we made sure OpenMatch could handle at least 250 entries per second. We had no incident caused by OpenMatch so far. We developed our own solution to clean the increasing release data. OpenMatch version 0.10 will include this fix. In conclusion, we are very satisfied with OpenMatch. We could accelerate the game development speed and we could provide a very fast yet scalable matchmaking service to our players. We plan to reuse open match for our next games and even expand it to other game studios in our group. Lastly, if you are interested in open match, I recommend it to looking at the website openmatch.dev, where you can find a great documentation and many examples to get started with. I can't wait to see what you can come up with open match in your game.